Hello, my name is Connie Liu. I'm an undergraduate at MIT, and today we're going to be talking about phylogenic classification. So you may know a little bit about Linnaean classification already. That's the standard way of classification. It gives you a two-part name for each species, the first word being the genus and the second one being the species. So if you're talking about humans, you would end up saying Homo sapiens. In this case, we're going to be talking about phylogenetic classification. And this kind of um, surpasses one of the Linnaean classifications uh, short, shortfalls, which is that Linnaean classification doesn't show evolutionary relationship in any way. Um, the phylogenetic classification, especially by depicting things visually through a tree, is able to show these evolutionary relationships. Um, so if you look at the phylogenetic tree on the screen right now, there's it actually shows you where all of these phyla are branching off into their separate um, phyla. And then uh, it, it kind of gives you an idea of the uh, ancestors that they all had. So they all shared this an these ancestral flagellates, but then they all branched off. Then they became the Nidaria phylum. So those would be jelly jellyfish and polyps. Um, then we also have the Chordata phyla up here. That would include humans and then your pet dog or your pet cat. Um, and then they also have mollusks. So all of these different phyla are branching off from this common ancestor of flagellates. And then one uh, kind of misleading part about phylogenetic classification, though, is that these lines don't really show any sequence of time. It's not a timeline. All it shows is um, possible branchings off of it. But just because Nidaria is a little ahead of Periphera doesn't mean that Nidaria evolved after it. It just is showing um, one way that this could have happened, but none of this is actually proven. So the phylogenetic classification form does have that limitation. It's not able to show the time of evolution. So um, the distance between uh, flagellates and periphery and flagellates and nidaria does not actually directly reflect into how much time it took uh, in reference to the distance for those to evolve in those separate ways. So it doesn't show time of evolution and um, it doesn't show order either, but it does show what common ancestors all of these had, which is very important information still that is not conveyed by the Linnaean classification system. So that's why it's always important to know both ways of classifying in order to get full information about whatever species you're researching.